What's up Blockheads? Today we are up at Seminole Harley-Davidson and we're making a video going over the Harley-Davidson Sportsters. I've got a ton of requests for this video talking about all of the different styles of Sportsters. So we're going to go over some of the stuff that they have here in inventory as well as some of the stuff that they don't have in inventory but can get. If you guys are interested in Sportsters, this will definitely be the video for you. Roll that intro and we'll get to it. So what's up blockheads i get a request for this video pretty often talking about all the different kinds of sportsters so i figured i would make a video going over harley's current selection and uh, we'll go through the similarities and the differences and you guys can take that knowledge if you're considering getting a sportster see what fits you best and go from there before we get started though i just want to give a special shout out to seminal harley davidson who is the sponsor of this episode with seminal harley davidson is family owned there's currently three generations of family working there they've got a huge selection of inventory they've got a riding academy that they offer with uh, one of the highest pass rates in the state very community based there's a lot of events that go on at this dealership if you guys look into their pre-owned and used inventory you're able to save pretty big seminal harley davidson it's located just north of orlando up in sanford there's some really great routes around the dealership me and the blockhead crew have uh, ridden up there a couple times and there's definitely some really good riding out that way you guys be sure to check seminal harley davidson out i'll drop their link down in the description below as well as their address and contact info Info. And be sure to tell them Blockhead sent you. So looking over the selection that Seminole Harley Davidson has currently in stock, which it's constantly on rotation, especially with the Sportsters. The ones that we're going to be looking at in the dealership today include two of the color options for the Iron 1200. So we've got the black and the white. We have an Iron 883. We also have a Harley Davidson Sportster 48. And then we also have a custom 1200. So the ones that they don't have in the video while I'm recording here, we are going to go over as well. And those include the Super Low, the 48 Special, and the Roadster. So the Sportster family is a pretty big family of bikes offered from Harley Davidson. So starting out just to go over the similarities and get those out of the way of most of the Sportsters, they're all going to have the same frame. So each of the bikes is basically built off of the same chassis right the same frame they're all going to have the same type of engine which is the evo or the evolution engine fun fact where i got the name for the channel what they tried to nickname the blockhead engine but it didn't stick but yeah the the engine is all going to be the evolution engine they're just going to have different variations of that you're going to have an 883 cc or you're going to have a 1200 cc engine so you've got basically like the iron 883 which has the 883 obviously or you're going to have like the 48 the roadster 1200 custom those are going to have the 1200 cc each of the bikes is going to have pretty much close to the same wheelbase they're going to have the same oil capacity each of them does have a five-speed transmission for a long time people have wanted these things to have a six-speed transmission but it's more meant for like you know around town bike it can do distance but you're limited to five-speed transmission here they're all going to have about the same miles per gallon which is reported between 48 and 51 miles per gallon whenever i was keeping track of it on my iron 883 I can uh, say I was getting between like right around 40 miles per gallon, I'd say, but that's also riding it pretty spiritedly. The braking is going to be the same across all of them with a single sided dual piston front and a dual piston rear. When it comes to the suspension, you know, they're going to have the uh, the coilovers on the back uh, on the outside in comparison to a soft tail where the suspension is, you know, on the inside. The exhaust routing is going to be the same for pretty much all of them. The oil and the battery covers are going to be the same for pretty much all of them. And then the gauges are going to be pretty similar for all of them as well. So obviously they do share a lot of similar characteristics seeing as how they're all part of the Sportster family. However, from bike to bike, different model to different model, there are going to be changes like the bars, the wheels, the tires, obviously the paint selection, the seating, the lighting. So we're going to start going over that bike by bike, checking out the ones here at Seminole Harley Davidson first. Starting out, we're going to be looking at the Iron 1200. So here at Seminole Harley-Davidson we have 
two color options, the black and the white. Iron 1200 has a 1200cc Evolution engine. They've got a blacked out finish on the engine, on the exhaust, the wheels. They did bring back some styling from like the 70s, you know, the AMF era. So the uh, the stripes, yeah, inspired by those back in the 70s days, like I said, AMF. And it shows what they call the bike's retro roots. Now this bike does have a cafe style solo seat. They're actually not that bad comfort wise as compared to some of the earlier models. One of the big changes for the Iron 1200s versus the previous Iron 883s in the stock or OEM configuration is it actually comes with black mini ape handlebars. So if you like, you know, a higher bar has a what they say is a conservative rise and bend for rider comfort. It also comes with a cast aluminum wheel, a mag wheel, not spoked wheels, which me personally, I prefer just because you're less maintenance in a spoked wheel. And something different for the Iron 1200s versus the other models is this actually comes with a fixed speed screen, basically the little fairing that's in the front. Now the Iron 1200 was definitely a good move by Harley Davidson because for the longest time, and believe me, I saw a lot of these requests was people trying to decide between the Harley Davidson 48 or the Iron 883. So you've got the 1200 and the 48 versus the 83 and the normal iron. People didn't want the smaller capacity of the gas tank on the 48. You know, they wanted the 1200 engine, but they didn't want that tank. They wanted the size of the tank from the iron, right? Which is, I want to say like a 3.3 gallon. And I think the 48 is like a 2.1 or something. So pretty small tank on the 48, but we'll get further into that as we uh, talk about that one. So this was a, a really good answer from Harley Davidson because people were looking for this combination of the 1200 CC engine with iron capacity tank of 3.3 gallons. So this bike was very well received. If you guys are looking for that iron style and uh, you want a 1200, it's now available, which is pretty cool. Going from the Iron 1200, it only makes sense to talk about the Iron 883. The Iron 883 features a raw, stripped down, blacked out look that many people love. It's definitely one of Harley's most popular sportsters. The biggest difference is obvious, it's in the name, the 883cc engine instead of a 1200cc engine. Other changes on the Iron 883 as compared to the Iron 1200 include matte or denim finishes, basically like a flat black or flat finish, as well as other various color options between the two. You've also got a different seat, lower bars, no speed screen, uh, you've got polished aluminum accents on the wheels and a polished lower rocker box covers versus blacked out on the Iron 1200s. There's not a lot of differences between the Iron 883 and the Iron 1200 in terms of mechanics, but they do each have their own style. So check them out, pick which one you like the most. If you're more comfortable on an 883cc engine, go for that. Or if you want more, you now have the option of going with the Iron style, but with a 1200 from the factory. Segwaying from the Iron, as I mentioned, Next up is the Harley Davidson Sportster 48. Why do they call it the 48? First and foremost, Harley Davidson basically carried over some design from bikes that they made in 1948. Whenever we went to visit the Harley Davidson Museum up in Milwaukee, I actually took a picture of one of their bikes from 1948, which I will share with you right here. As you can tell, it's got the peanut tank, the, you know, bigger front and rear tire, you know, those fat beefy tires. It's lower to the ground. That's the 48 style. So the bike in the video here is actually a used and customized 48. So it doesn't come with the bars, air cleaner or the exhaust like this pretty much comes as seen in the picture here. And it does have a couple different color options. The engine, like I said earlier, all the similarities, it is a Evo engine or Evolution, and it is a 1200cc. A couple of the signature things that make a 48 a 48 is the fat tires and the iconic peanut tank. Now, a lot of people don't like the size of the tank, but you gotta consider that, you know, this bike wasn't made to be like more of a distance rider. Like I said, five-speed transmission. The peanut tank, it's, it's very much based on the aesthetic. So you're gonna have a 2.1 gallon peanut tank. It's not gonna get you too far, but great for around town. Now the 48 is gonna have a couple more chrome accents as compared to the iron. So you're gonna have some uh, heat shields on the exhaust that are chrome push rod tubes. They're gonna be chrome, tappet covers, chrome. Upper rocker box covers and the lower rocker box covers are going to usually on most of the 48s be either chrome or, or like a polished aluminum, but it does have the blacked out fins. 
on the engine. The newer 48s come with mag wheels. I think that started, I wanna say in like 2016. So if you're looking at a 48 before 2016, more than likely it's gonna have spoked wheels. Now the big difference between spoked wheels versus mag wheels is spoke wheels. You have to have a tube inside of the tire as well as a wheel band, like a little piece of rubber that basically covers the spokes. It's a little bit different of a process as compared to a mag wheel. Traditionally, mag wheels are less maintenance. So from, like I said, I think it's like 2016 or 2017, Harley Davidson started making the 48 with mag wheels instead of the spoked wheels. Maybe it's personal preference. I like them more. Like I said, they're less maintenance. We had some experiences with spoked wheels becoming unbalanced and you basically have to take them entirely apart, re-spoke them and all that stuff. And it takes quite a while. So if you're paying for the labor, it takes a bit. So this is just me sharing my experience with you guys. A lot of people appreciate and like the spoke to look more just because it's a little more classic, but at the end of the day, that all boils down to personal preference and it's entirely up to y'all. Now the 48s do come with a solo seat, but they do make a rear passenger seat or pillion option. Circling back to the fatter front wheel and tire, just to note the beefier front end, it gives you uh, a much smoother ride. It kind of takes away from the nimbleness of the skinnier tire of like the irons, but it does make for a smoother ride. So if there's, you know, like bumps and stuff on the road or like those little cracks and stuff that you kind of come across like in line with the direction you're going, it's not gonna wanna like sink into that and pull you on the road as easily as it is with like a skinnier tire. So it's definitely a perk of having a fatter front wheel. Uh, also regarding the suspension on this, the 48 does have a 49 millimeter fork with cartridge dampening. So uh, they're a bit thicker of a front fork and it has uh, larger triple clamps and a fork brace. They've added a cartridge damping technology to keep the handling what they say is crisp and confident no matter how rough the road is and a really cool thing is they've started using emulsion rear shocks with a screw adjuster so emulsion rear shocks are quite a bit better than the shocks that they've used previously you've got basically a screw to adjust your preload you can basically easily adjust the shocks to fit your riding style talking about the 48 going from that we'll talk about the 48 special which in terms of specs wheel tire size engine all that stuff it's the same things that changed on the 48 special is the styling so it still has the evo engine it still has the same exhaust routing the same solo seat but with this one gave it a balance of blacked out and chrome finishes to you know give it a bit more of a classic style to it they did the amf style or 70s custom tank art and then they've used more chrome on the 48 special so the the covers on the side on this one are chrome versus the normal 48 they're black the 48 special actually comes with what they call tall boy handlebars which are spread out and they come up a little more they're not quite the shape of apes everything else beyond that is pretty similar so it's just going to be a change of the styling like i said on the the covers the tank graphic but yeah i believe everything else from there is is the same moving from the sportster 48 to the next one that they have in stock up here at Seminole Harley Davidson, the 1200 Custom. Now this isn't a new one, this is a used one, so there are some changes. The person that owned it beforehand did customize it a little more, which is one of the really cool things that you can do with the Sportsters is there's like an absolute ton of customization that you can do to these bikes. It's one of the reasons that I enjoy them so much. The 1200 Custom, it does have the, like I said, the Evo engine. It is a 1200cc stock. It comes with a chrome shorty dual exhaust and uh, a couple different tanks graphics blacked out and chrome details very similar to the 48 special custom style paint this one does have black laced steel wheels basically it gives that classic look from spoked wheels and it also is going to have a larger front tire versus a skinny tire like as found on the iron now the one in the video here is outfitted with some saddlebags, which like I said, they're very customizable, so you can add some saddlebags to it if you'd like. And then it also has a highway bar in the front. Also, if you notice one of the things about this bike, the handlebars and where the gauge comes up are very different. It has very specific type of riser that uh, kind of comes up and holds the gauge and angles it more towards you, which is different than the iron and the uh, 48 models. Also to note, the one in the video does have mag wheels but the listing on Harley Davidson's website actually shows it with the spoked wheels. So you can customize these a lot, like even from the factory, if you're looking to get a 1200 custom, 
customized even further. You can do the bags, you can do different wheels, you can do the windshield. Like on this one, there's the front windshield that is usually quick detached that you can put pretty much across any of the Sportsters. Once again, perk of the Sportsters. I don't see too many of the 1200 customs around. Um, I do have a friend who has one, but other than that, I mean, I only see them every now and then. The The market definitely seems to be dominated by like the iron and the iron 1200s I'm seeing a lot more of lately. And then also the 48 when it comes to Sportsters. So we've gone over everything that Seminole Harley Davidson has here currently, but I'm gonna go ahead and go over the rest of the Sportster line. I get a lot of questions about this bike here. It is the Super Low. So the Super Low, the name tells it all. It's a very low bike. Uh, it has a low seat height, a well-balanced stand, and a low center of gravity for easy handling. People that are vertically challenged, <laughs> people that aren't as tall that are looking for a Harley that they'll be able to fit onto, this would be one of those good answers for them. Whenever you're able to flat foot a bike while sitting, it gives you confidence and that confidence translates into a better ride. So if you're not comfortable on some of the others because of the seat height, this might be one to look at. Lower center of gravity, easy to handle. It does have the 883cc engine. It has a low bucket seat, longer travel rear suspension, easy grip handlebars. So the ergonomics on this one are much different and it helps to build confidence in learning to ride or, you know, if you already know how to ride, it's basically aimed at comfort, adding to your confidence while riding. This bike also doesn't lean as far over since it is lower, which lifting it off its side stand, that makes it much easier. The seat height is 25.5 inches and putting this on a Sportster frame, which is a already narrow frame, makes it easy to maneuver through turns at streets and at varying speeds. They put the emulsion rear shocks on this, which we talked about, which has a screw adjuster, preload adjuster that soaks up the bumps. You know, they're really good shocks from the factory and you can adjust them to your riding style. Now this does have a skinnier tire up front, an 18 inch wheel up front and a 17 inch wheel in the back. So the skinnier, lightweight, taller wheel actually makes it easier for maneuverability, uh, even at low speeds. Currently, Harley-Davidson is offering these with chrome cases, chrome exhaust, chrome air cleaner, and then I wanna say like aluminum heads or something. There's a couple pictures which you guys are seeing here, so you can kind of get an overall feel and vibe of the style of it. And last but not least, we have the Harley-Davidson Roadster, which is probably the most different in terms of ergonomics than the rest of the Sportster line. It does come with a 1200cc Evo engine. Styling is blacked out. It has lowered bars and uh, lowered speedo with a tachometer. Cool thing about this Sportster is it has the 43 millimeter front suspension with inverted forks. One of the few Sportsters that has dual disc front brakes with floating rotors, so you can be more confident in your stopping. It also features a much higher up, what they call an aggressive, and comfortable two-up seat. They say that it's an optimal combination of comfort and custom style. You'll have to sit on it to be the judge of that. It's a low profile two-up seat with a nice deep scoop to keep you firmly planted under acceleration. So that part that comes upwards on the back kind of helps to keep you locked in place whenever you want to, you know, get on throttle a bit. And the seat height on this, like I said, it's a little higher than most. It's actually 29 and a half inches off the ground, which does give you a feeling of a low center of gravity, but like you're sitting more not in the bike like some of the others make you feel, but like more on top of the bike, which gives you a much different feeling of handling, especially when you're leaning. Now the wheels on this are mag wheels, 19 inch in the front, 18 inch in the rear, skinnier front tire, not a fat tire like the 48s or the customs. It keeps that nimble feeling. I have seen people modify this one out to be a little bit more custom like the cafe style since the uh, fender already kind of lends itself well to that. Harley Davidson makes, you know, like small speed screens or windshields for them, different mirrors. You can customize just any of these Sportster bikes with parts from Harley Davidson, you know, OEM or Screaming Eagle parts. And then there's an absolutely massive aftermarket for the Sportster line and you can make them into anything you want. I've seen Sportsters made into cafe racers, choppers, bobbers. The customization for these bikes is endless, which is one of the huge reasons that I absolutely love this platform. So that's all of the current Sportster line. You're asking yourself, which one is the best one for me? Is it the Super Low? Is it the Iron 883? Is it the Iron 1200? Is it the 1200 Custom, the 48, the 48 Special? or the Roadster. Well, my biggest piece of advice is to go to a Harley dealership, sign the waiver for a test ride and go test ride one. See which one fits you best. The Iron 883, the Iron 1200, the 48, the 48 Special, 
1200 custom they're all going to have about the same seat height right in the middle the super low obviously it's going to have a lower seat height so if you're vertically challenged that might be the one for you the roadster is going to be a bit taller so you know maybe if you're a bit taller and you feel comfortable on that you're looking for something a little more like sporty in the sportster line that one might be for you but you basically have a decision between the 883 engine and the 1200 cc engine the iron 883 and the super low having the 883 and the rest of the line having the 1200 lots of modifications out there for the engines you can do stage four kits on these things i've heard based on the gearing for the uh, 883s the gearing is a bit different than what comes on the 1200s that if you were to do a big bore kit on the 883 and bore it out to like a 1200 a 1250 1275 or whatever kits are available out there that they're actually faster than if you were to take a 1200 and bore it out you know, do a big bore kit. I'm gonna be trying to build mine out personally, and I guess we'll see, but I've heard good things. In terms of reliability, the Evo engine has been around since, I wanna say they implemented it or started using it in 1984. Now the Sportster as a whole has been made for quite a while. I'm not sure the exact date, I'll look it up, but I know it's been around for a long time. The engine tried and proven, a lot of people refer to it as an anvil, you know, like unbreakable. Whenever people talk about reliability, I mean, I've had a couple sports and I've never had any issues with any of them. Just today I finished building one out that I'm gonna be giving away through Patreon. I had that thing on the lift for six months. I hadn't started it for six months. I put some fresh gas in it, battery was good, couple cranks, cranked right up, I rode it, and it was great. Six months it sat there. If you guys are interested in joining in on that, check out patreon.com slash blackheadmoto. I'm building and giving away a Harley Davidson Sportster 48. I've only had really great experiences with them. And one of the cool things about the Sportster line is that Harley Davidson has what they call the Freedom Promise. If you buy a Sportster, and I think it can be used Sportster, you'll have to ask your dealership if you're going to look and purchase one from a dealership. You buy that bike and within your first year of owning it, if you decide that you've outgrown it, you wanna trade up, or you feel that another Harley Davidson fits you better, you can actually take that bike. They will basically let you trade it in for what you bought it for. Pretty sure it has to be within a year. Don't don't quote me on anything like this. I'm not a spokesperson for Harley Davidson, but be sure to visit the link down in the description below to read up more on it and to get into the specifics. But it's a, one of those really cool things that you know shows Harley is trying to bring in new riders. Anyways, I hope this video has been insightful for you all. I hope you've learned something. If you're considering a sportster, like I said, my biggest piece of advice, go to a Harley dealership, talk to one of the salesmen, tell them that you're interested in a sportster. Maybe based on this video, you've kind of narrowed down which model you're interested in. Take one for a test ride. That's the best way to develop a feel for if the bike fits you and if you're comfortable with it. If the video was helpful, you guys be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to hit subscribe as well for more motorcycle content. Like I said, if you guys are interested in possibly winning a Harley Davidson, I'm giving one away. So check out Patreon. Link is also down in the description below. Become a Blockhead patron. Once again, big shout out to Seminole Harley Davidson. You guys be sure to look them up. And if you're ever in Seminole Harley Davidson, be sure to tell them Blockhead sent you. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Till next time, you guys ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. Deuces.